Here's the easiest way to make $1 million. Step one, create a Twitter account. Step two, follow Elon Musk and wait for him to tweet about Dogecoin. Step three, buy Dogecoin. Watch as the hype generated from Elon's tweet pumps the price of Dogecoin. Step four, sell your Doge for an instant profit. That's pretty much it. Okay, okay, I'm just kidding. Buying Dogecoin based on Elon Musk tweets is most likely not going to make you a millionaire. Neither is day trading, meme stocks, or the latest crypto staking scheme offering a 102,000% annual return on your investment. It's called Titan. It promises 102,000% APY. I still can't believe that last one was a real thing. And in case you're wondering how that crypto scam turned out, everyone lost all of their money. None of these trendy ways to make money are smart, and you're probably not going to become a millionaire doing any of them. There really is only one way to become a millionaire that is both easy and realistic. And the best thing about this method is that all of us can utilize it, and you don't need a lot of money to start. And that method is investing. Investing is without a doubt the most realistic way for you to go from zero dollars to a million dollars, and there's so much data that backs this up. The largest survey of millionaires ever conducted found that three out of four millionaires said that regular consistent investing over a long period of time is the reason for their financial success. What's even harder to believe is that 31% of participants averaged a six-figure salary over the course of their career, and one-third never even made six figures in any single working year of their career. This just proves that if you can become an intelligent investor, you don't even need to have a high income to become a millionaire. And I guarantee that right now, half of you watching this video come from the school of thought of, I don't want to wait until I'm coming off my third hip replacement surgery, spending my last days in a retirement retirement home playing bingo to finally enjoy my money. I want to enjoy my money now while I'm still young. And I completely agree with that viewpoint. Investing might be the smartest and most realistic route to $1 million, but it is slower than other routes like starting a business. But consider this, nearly 7 out of 10 of all new businesses end up failing. So those stories that Hollywood likes to glamorize about young computer geniuses who develop an app and earn millions of dollars overnight are the exception, not the rule. I want to become a millionaire as fast as possible just like all of you, and I'm working on side hustle right now to hopefully achieve that goal. But just in case that doesn't work out, I'm also investing my money on the side so that it's guaranteed that me and my family are set up later in life. And so I don't become a part of the 40% of older Americans that rely exclusively on social security for retirement income. Today, I wanna to take you on a journey along the investor's road to $1 million. What this is, is an investing scenario that you can all realistically follow that will enable you to go from $0 to $1 million. Your investing journey is not going to be without bumps, hurdles, and of course, the occasional full-blown market crash. But if you follow the investing principles and money tips I've laid out for you along the way, you can realistically reach your goal of $1 million. Our journey to $1 million hinges on three important assumptions. Assumption number one, you make $50,000 a year. Two, you invest 25% of your after-tax income on a monthly basis. Three, you receive a 7% annual return on your investment. Why these assumptions? Well, I want to make this scenario as realistic as possible and also be applicable to the majority of people. That's why I'm assuming things like a $50,000 salary, because that's about what the average salary in the US is, as well as assuming a 7% investment return, because 7% is the long-term average annual real return of the stock market. So here we are at the beginning of our investing journey, years one to five. We have an investment portfolio worth zero dollars and a long way ahead of us to get to one million dollars. This is the most crucial time in your investing journey. Abraham Lincoln once said, Give me six hours to chop down a tree and I will spend the first four sharpening the ax. This quote rings true for investing. Your decisions now will have the greatest impact on the rest of your journey. That's why you have to spend time developing your skills and preparing for your financial future. One of the best ways to metaphorically sharpen your ax is to start building your credit score. The difference between having an excellent credit score versus a bad credit score can literally save you five or even six figures over the course of your life. Think about when it's time for you to buy a house. You probably won't have enough money to buy your house all in cash, chances are you will need a mortgage. And the mortgage rate you'll have to pay is for the most part dependent on your credit score. The better the credit score, the lower the interest rate and the less you'll have to pay the bank each month for your home. Several years ago, I made the decision to start building my credit score. I figured that when I do decide to buy my house, my credit score would already be considered excellent. And this really paid off for me. My excellent credit score allowed me to get the lowest interest rate possible on my mortgage. Now I'm technically saving hundreds of dollars every month on my house, just because of that simple decision to sharpen my axe and improve my credit score earlier on in life. 
I was able to raise my credit score by getting a beginner credit card. A card like the Discover It Secured credit card is perfect. Discover approves everyone for this card as it's intended for people that either don't have a credit score or have a bad score. So if you have poor credit or don't have a credit score yet, this is something I definitely recommend. But remember, if you want to use credit cards to your advantage, it's essential that you never hold a balance. This means paying off your balance in full every month. You also need to be careful and only use your card to pay for things that you would already normally purchase. And if you don't trust yourself to do these two things, then you should probably avoid using a credit card altogether. At this stage in your journey, you should get educated on investing. I think that everyone that doesn't have a traditional finance education should spend at least 30 hours or so just learning everything they can about investing and personal finance. Watch YouTube videos, read books, listen to podcasts, just 30 hours and I guarantee you will know more about personal finance than 99% of people today. And this will literally pay you dividends for the rest of your life. The investment vehicles you choose to build your wealth are so incredibly important. Imagine if you're not educated in investing. You might believe that the best place to hold your money is in a Wells Fargo savings account. That's honestly not even a far-fetched example. Most people today have no idea where to put their savings other than in their own bank accounts. If you make this mistake, you would only be generating a return of 0.25% annually on your savings. But it's even worse of a return than you might have initially thought. Can you guess why? Because when you account for inflation, you're not really making 0.25%. 0.25%, you're actually losing money every year. Compare this to putting your money into something like VOO, which is an ETF that tracks the returns of the S&P 500. This is the investment choice of none other than Warren Buffett himself, who has instructed that 90% of his fortune be invested into the S&P 500 after his passing. Think of VOO as essentially a big basket of stocks. This investment vehicle has averaged a return of 7% annually, and that 7% number is also adjusted for inflation. And if you're wanting to get started investing into ETFs like VOO, make sure you claim your 12 free stocks valued up to $30,600 when you open an account on Webull and fund it with as little as one cent. Links to that in the description below. It's free money, so you might as well do it. So following the assumptions I mentioned earlier, assuming you invest 25% of your $50,000 salary into VOO and average a 7% return, then after five years, you would have an investment portfolio worth $58,657. Now that the ball's rolling, let's move on to the next part of our investing journey, years 6 to 15. You're going to continue investing 25% of your after-tax income on a regular basis. But if you do happen to have the means, I would definitely recommend saving up to buy a house. When you buy a house, you'll most likely get a mortgage that is contracted to be paid back over 30 years. So if you can manage to buy a house fairly early on in your investing journey, you'll actually be able to pay off the entirety of your mortgage before the time you retire. And with no mortgage, your living expenses will be pretty minimal. I mean, just think about how much higher your discretionary income would be right now if you didn't have to pay for your housing. Buying my house a couple years ago when I was only 22 was honestly one of the best financial decisions I could have made. Because even though this house isn't my forever home, when it does come time to buy my dream home, what I plan on doing is keeping this house as a rental. That way I can make some passive rental income and eventually in the future, I will have two houses that are fully paid off. Also putting any financial reasons aside, at this time you'll likely be in your 30s. You'll probably have kids or at least want to start having kids soon. And it's not exactly ideal to still be renting an apartment whilst raising a family. So just for the sake of having a good quality of life, I think it's usually best to quit renting and become a homeowner when you get into your 30s. It's probably going to be difficult for most of you to save up to buy a house whilst continuing to invest a large portion of your income. So don't worry too much if you have to take a little time off investing to do what's right for you. But assuming you were able to keep consistently investing your money, then by the end of year 15, you will now have an investment portfolio worth around $256,316. Moving on to the final stretch of your investing journey, years 16 to 30. I like to call this part of the journey staying the course. That's because you're going to come across many obstacles on your path to $1 million. You see, our economy is cyclical in nature. It expands when times are good, reaches a peak, and then contracts in times of recession and reaches a low. And assets follow the same oscillating cycle. I can confidently tell you that if you're invested into the stock market, you are going to experience many times when your investment portfolio is almost cut in half. And at this point on your road to $1 million, you would have built up quite a sizable investing portfolio. This is why when the market inevitably takes a turn for the worst, it can be so depressing to watch years of stock market gains disappear in as little as a few months. You have to remember that investing is as emotional as it is logical. You have to mentally prepare yourself to see your investments plummet in value on several occasions, 
and treat these times as inevitable steps in your journey. When you see your investments going down in value each day, it can be really tempting to sell, but you can't do that. This is a practice known as timing the market. And timing the market is not an effective strategy for investing. It's statistically impossible to time the market correctly on a consistent basis over long periods of time. If you do sell, then you're going to be selling at a bad time when the market is already down. And I'm willing to bet that you won't be able to time buying into the bottom of the crash perfectly. And the only reason I'm willing to bet that is because it's been proven time and time again through numerous studies that it's impossible to reliably buy back into the market perfectly every time after a crash. Instead, what you should be doing is maximizing your time in the market. You have to keep doing what you've been doing this whole time, which is dollar cost averaging. Keep investing your money on a regular basis, even when the stock market is going down. If you can remain a disciplined investor and don't fall into the lie that is timing the market, then in year 30, your investment portfolio will surpass the $1 million mark. But this isn't quite the end of your journey. Now that you've built up your million dollar portfolio, there are some final things you need to do. You're older now, so it's a good idea to start reallocating a larger percentage of your investment portfolio into safer, less volatile assets. You see, when you're young, it's more acceptable to invest in riskier assets such as growth stocks. That's because when you inevitably experience a stock market crash, you have time on your side. You don't need to touch your retirement money for decades, so there's no risk of having to sell your investments at a loss. But as you get older, Older, there's less time until you're going to need that money, so you're in less of a position to be able to weather a stock market crash. What you don't want to do is put yourself in a situation where your volatile growth stocks crash by 50% right at the time when you need to start cashing out your retirement money to pay for your living expenses now that you're retired. That's why the closer you are to retiring, the lower your risk tolerance should be. At this point in your journey, it's typically a good idea to move your portfolio into safer investments, such as blue chip dividend stocks and even bonds, which tend to perform far better than the overall stock market during market downturns. Now that it's time to make use of your investments by withdrawing money from your portfolio, it's often recommended that you follow something financial planners like to call the 4% rule. This is a rule of thumb used to determine how much money you're able to withdraw from your investment account each year without reducing your overall balance. Applying the 4% rule to $1 million, you will be able to withdraw $40,000 every year from your investment portfolio without ever reducing your principal investment amount. That means that money would last forever at this rate of withdrawal. But even though I think everyone should be investing, if you're a highly driven to succeed type of person and you want to enjoy what money can buy while you're still young, then you need to watch this video I made on side hustles. I've used most of these side hustles to supplement my regular income from my day job. And it's what has allowed me to be able to invest significantly more money than I would have ever been able to otherwise. 